It's teacher talk, it's teacher talk. Education, dedication, collaboration. We need some inspiration. Public schools and private tools. It's analytical, it's so political. It's teacher talk. Welcome, welcome to Teacher Talk. On this show, we discuss education policies, challenges in the classroom, and we invite special guests to look back over their school age years and to give their input on education policies today. Callers are provided anonymity. Do not have to identify yourself, others, or your location. Let's get started. This is Teacher Talk. I have Michael Green on the line. Michael Green, the science machine. Welcome to Teacher Talk. Thank you so much. Glad to be with you. Mike, from following you not only on uh, social media, but a few articles that schools have to review, some of the wonderful work you do in science, science persona that you have, and rightly (laughs) so. Uh, Let's go back to your school age years in school. Tell us about the student, Michael Green. Wow, the student Michael Green. That's it's really an interesting story how it all came to pass. For as long as I can remember, someone was either reading to me or putting a book in front of me for re- for me to read myself. My uh, my mother was an English major, my father was an English major, my grandparents were both English majors. So for as long as I can remember, you know someone was either, like I said, either reading to me or giving me a book to read myself. And so I fell in love with reading at a really young age. Is I didn't really like science growing up. My my, my love was really English. And um, I think a lot of that is basically because most of the teachers that I had growing up didn't make science fun and interactive. It was just kind of like, open up your textbook to page 46 and they'd start reading. And so that natural love and curiosity that I think most children have for science, mine wasn't really nurtured, so to speak. And so as a result, it wasn't until I graduated from college, actually. And my first job was at a science museum where I went downstairs one day to watch a science show that was taking place for a field trip that had come to the museum, and I lost my mind. I couldn't believe. <laughs> was it sidetrack? It was sidetrack, absolutely. I love that and place. Downtown Atlanta. Downtown Atlanta. Open to the public, Michael Green in his white lab jacket and Afro green hair. He produces extraordinary science programs that captivate young audiences all across the United States president of the museum was my mom's best friend and so that's how I got the job and she actually created the position for me a program that we take to schools program kind of came to be and you're a Morehouse graduate I am I am the house the house my grandfather (laughs) was actually the president of Morehouse as a matter of fact he was the first alumnus to ever become president he was handpicked by Benjamin E. Mays, Dr. Hugh Gloucester, Hugh Uh Gloucester, and he was was there from 67 to 87, and I actually got there after he retired, and I knew that I had a quality program, but -hmm. if you think about it at this point in time, the term STEM hadn't even been coined yet, you know, and science was really taking a back seat to language arts, math, and reading, And it wasn't until about 2005, or I should say 2002, I believe it was, when Bush signed No Child Left Behind. The historic and controversial reform efforts proposed by then-President Bush, that was in 2002, was replaced in 2015 with the Every Student Succeeds Act. Both legislation addressed higher qualification for teachers, student performance and assessments, and more focus on science achievement, targeting inquiry-based learning in science, which eventually led to STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For more information on the differences between legislation of 2002 and 2015, I have added a link to the program podcast description and also to the Teacher Talk blog. So how did that uh, turn your brand into more of what we see today? About doing the program, it really doesn't matter where you do it, you know. Kids kind of have that, like I said, that natural curiosity for science anyway. 
I just love to watch the way that they react, you know, and I think that's what makes the program new for me, even though I've been doing it for 19 years. Certainly you know about some of the difficulty we have having resources brought into the science classroom. What most uh, valuable advice uh, would you give new science teachers? You can have the most outstanding resources, but until you are able to hold the attention of that child, no learning takes place. And so I would encourage teachers to be as creative as you possibly can in order to hold the attention of that child. Because once you have that child's attention, you can teach them anything. My name is Julian, and you're listening to Teacher Talk with Dr. Lisa Moser. Teacher Talk is sponsored by Weather Wonder Incorporated, an early learning science advocate. For more information, log on to lisamoser.com. And if you would like to participate in an upcoming show, click on to the Teacher Talk blog for details. Now back to Teacher Talk. Yes, uh, I tell you, it's amazing. Uh, Atlanta born, Atlanta bred, but I've had the honor of of working with IBM and the NASA Space Shuttle Program, part of the Space Shuttle team. Um, did that in for about eight and a half years, but I'm fortunate now to be a professional speaker. I travel around the country doing workshops, seminars on leadership, team building, customer service. Uh, I have three books out and working on my fourth book on personal and professional growth. He has long inspired me. Mike Howard has a computer science background and is a top motivational speaker. I asked about his inspiration to go into what was a STEM career start. Well, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, my degree was in computer science and mathematics, and when I attended college, I wanted to make sure I had a job where there were some opportunities. And I knew that, you know, that was in the sciences, the math, so I decided to go into computer science and mathematics. And to be honest with you, I looked at the money and the opportunity. <laughs> Mike is always a high-energy guy, and his insight is always on target. And that's where the opportunities were, because I did not want to go to college and then come out of college and not have a job and not have opportunities. Mike and I are close in age, and I asked him if he could remember when the Apollo 11 landed on the moon. Well, I tell you, I was a little young buck running around, probably about seven years old, eight years old. So I remember the TV being on, and, you know, when you're that oh, you're running around and your attention span is small. But, you know, I remember hearing Walter Cronkite. You know, and they were talking about the the, the, the the mission and the mission control center in Houston, Texas. And I remember that, and people were tuned in. And, and it's amazing. In our neighborhood back then, people really didn't believe that they were actually going to the moon. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But they did not believe they were actually going to the moon. They were like, oh, nobody's going to the moon. But I remember <laughs> that distinctly because people did not actually believe that it was happening. People have a tendency of running from the math and the sciences, they're like, oh, that's too hard. But let me just share this with you. Everything is hard initially. It's about what you put the time in to learn. And I ask young people, I say, you know, how, how many hours are you putting into the math and the sciences? And, well, oh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't like it. I'm not, no, no. And then I ask the question, well, how much time are you putting into that video game that you play? You see, if you put the time, whatever you put the time in, you know, it will grow. What you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. What you recognize, you energize. So if you put the time in, if you put the same time in that you put in, and I watch these young people, man, they put the time in to go to these camps to learn how to play basketball, to learn how to become a better football player. They put the time in. They will get up early. They're getting these leagues, these little leagues, the AAU leagues. They will put the time in. And I'm going to submit to you that if you put the time in to develop your skills in math, in science, your leadership skills, your communication skills. If you develop those skills, you will be successful. Mike Howard, thank you, and much success to your book, From Ordinary to Extraordinary, Success Begins Within, uh, available online. 
I have another phone call to go to, none other than the extraordinary Tom Jones, a journalist here in the Atlanta area. And I'm going to pose the same question. Tom, do you recall when the Apollo 11 landed on the moon? Yes, uh, I was a child around eight years old. I'm from Houston. Uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, I grew up in Houston, went to school there, graduated from Texas Southern University with a broadcast journalism degree. As you know, NASA uh, headquarters are in Houston, uh, mission control. So we heard about NASA all the time. That was just a constant there. So I was always captivated with space exploration and NASA. So I remember as a child uh, uh, that uh, mission. Here in the Atlanta area, you have covered everything from politics, education, crime. And you mentioned that you're originally from Houston. Uh, you also worked in a couple of other markets. Well, after I graduate, my, uh, graduated with a broadcast uh, journalism degree, then I started working and went to Amarillo, Texas, Shreveport, Louisiana, Las Vegas, Nevada, before coming here to uh, Atlanta. Do you remember the Challenger? Do I remember the Challenger? Yes. Yes, I do. I wasn't in, in, in broadcast then, uh, and I remember it was a couple of weeks after my first daughter uh, was born, and I was working, and I remember being at home, seeing that on TV or hearing about it, and and I was I'm always been, I've always been captivated and just really immersed in news, and I'm a news junkie, so just so heartbroken over the fact that people lost their lives in this endeavor. You know, our first African American astronaut died, uh, first teacher who went on a space mission died, and and it, it, it was just a collective heartbreak. In the country, uh, you kind of felt like these were family members who had been lost, and I still remember it today. Tom Jones, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing and looking back on science and education. Tom Jones, find him on WSB TV. This year was the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, landing man on the moon. This year also marks the 33rd anniversary since we lost the entire crew of the Challenger. No one remembers this moment of loss more than Mr. Carl McNair. Now, I have to tell you that we're in a coffee shop and it's a little bit noisy, but it was an awesome opportunity to meet the brother of astronaut Ron McNair, Mr. Carl McNair. Your family has an interesting legacy. Let's talk about you first. Wow, I came to talk about my brother because what people usually want me to talk about. So let me see. Well, um, it seems that my my life and my, my brother's is so clone. I'm 10 months older than Ron. So a lot of the experiences that I've had in life was with him until my post-college life. Even for a while, that was part of his, his life too because we were roommates while he was going to MIT. So, so past that, I guess that's when I start having a singular uh, life. I started my own company, my own uh, uh, technical consulting company, and I didn't. I wasn't in it more than a year before the Challenger accident took place. The Space Shuttle Challenger is especially memorable for science teachers like crew member Krista McCullough. And African Americans, we hold great respect for the life of astronaut Ron McNair. That's going to do it for this edition we call Back to School, Back to Science. I'm Lisa Moser, and this is Teacher Talk. It's Teacher Talk, it's Teacher Talk. Education, dedication, collaboration. We need some inspiration. Public schools and private tools. It's analytical, it's so political.